Hi there. Hello, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and uh, I'm still up here in the woods, as you can tell. This will be the last Draw With Me from this remote location. We will return to our spacious, state-of-the-art studio by next week, hopefully. Um, we've been here for a all month, and uh, it's been nice, but now it's raining a lot, so my... <clears throat> My patience with the nature is wearing thin. But it has been lovely. Um, what about those fire engines? Amazing to see. Amazing to see all those different interpretations of what a fire engine can be. So many different types of fire engines, too. People didn't just draw from my reference, but they brought in different kinds of uh, fire engines from different parts of the world. It was so cool to see. And... Um, it was great to see. I love to see just the cavalcade, the procession, the, the sort of series of different ones all juxtaposed with each other. So I hope you enjoyed those too. Thank you for contributing. We had close to 100 fire engines driving up and uh, everything is, was very, um, I don't know, it was just cool. I liked it. Um, <clears throat> so I see there's a few new people here joining us. I hope that you will all um, welcome them. And for those of you who are new, let me just explain what the heck this is. Basically, we get together for uh, roughly an hour, sometimes less, sometimes very, very rarely more. And um, we just hang out and draw whatever we want to. But I pick a thing that I want to draw and I draw it. And you're welcome to draw it with me or not. Um, you can watch me draw. You can do whatever you want. Um, it is not a drawing lesson, although I will sort of try to explain what I'm doing. Although a lot of times I've never drawn this stuff before and I may not have even ever used the materials before. So prepare yourself for pratfalls, incompetence, humiliation, and all the other things that go along with my art making at least. But I don't care. It's fun. It's fun to make art. And that's really the point of what we're doing here is, you know, just making stuff and it doesn't really matter if it's any good. Occasionally it'll be good. When you make it, it's good. When I make it, meh, it doesn't matter. Um, so um, let's talk about what are we going to draw today? Today we are going to draw, well, as you know, it is National Moth Week. And we'll talk a bit more about what that means and how you're planning to celebrate it. But yes, I'm not sure whether today is the first day of it or whether this entire week, it's unclear. The National Moth Council is notoriously opaque and uh, close to the vest with their plans and their programs. They're a massively powerful institution, as you know. If you have ever bought a sweater of any kind, you're familiar with their work um, and the various... Swiss cheese that they create out of it. What's going on here? I'm going to turn the fan off because it does burn. Oh, there's, a, there's an annoying fan. Yes, I don't want anybody having like a... a is it going to go off? Migraine. <laughs> it looks like you could have like an epileptic seizure from that. All right. So if I start pouring with sweat, you're responsible. You'll know why. Um, so yes, so it's moth week. We're going to be drawing moths. I'm, it sounds like... And not a very good assignment, but I think actually it has the potential to be quite beautiful. So, um, Erica is doing her master's thesis on moths. That's very interesting. And look, she even has a moth as her icon. Well, then you're one step ahead of us. You can you can uh, join in with um, some some additional moth information. Chris Seidel is mentioning the Moth Radio Hour. This is the Moth Sketchbook one half hour, it's true. I, I used to listen to the Moth. I found it kind of depressing after a while, but that's me. Um, so yes, we're ready to, to move on. Let's talk about um, materials, first of all. Um, today is, is sponsored by Hanamula, the fine German headquartered um, sketchbook manufacturer, but specifically the 100% cotton sketchbook, which I am an enormous fan of, despite the fan slowly petering out above my head. Um, 
I'm a huge fan of this 100% cotton sketchbook. It's it's pretty new. And we're going to be giving away... How many are we giving away? I'm not sure exactly. Um, we're giving away some to lucky people who write to info at sketchbookschool.com. Tell us if they'd like one. If you want to, tell us why. But uh, yes, we're giving away four of them, and they're landscape. This particular one that you see here is vertical. The one I have is square, but the one we're giving away is landscape. So it moves horizontal, in other words. Um, and it is a six size. So yes, and please include your mailing address in the US. We can only give out this prize to people in the United States because we're sponsored by Hanamura USA. I hope that that's okay with anybody who's not from here. You can still buy this particular sketchbook in other places. We just can't give you a free one. However, we're also sponsored by Windsor & Newton. And they are going to be giving away um, some pro marker, watercolor pro markers, which, as you know, I'm a big fan of. Similar deal. Write to us. Info at sketchbookschool.com. Tell us that you'd like one. It's a set, actually. And uh, they are they are juicy up. I may haul one out later on and, and show you how it works. But um, in general, they are just about my favorite thing to play with these days. Uh, so uh, Garrett wants to know whether Hanamula's paper is manufactured in Germany. I don't know. Um, maybe Joe Domeyer is going to join us and he can say that, tell us. Or has it been outsourced like other manufacturers? I don't know. You mean, is it made in Papiria? In the cardboard countries? I don't know. Is it made from... I have no idea. One could probably look at, look at it and see. Let me have a look at mine. Does it say? I don't know. I took the cover off it. It is. It is still made in Germany. All right. Thank you, JJ. How does she know that? She probably just made it up. Anyway. No. JJ will never, never tell you anything but the truth. Much to my chagrin, I wish that she would lie to me more. All right, so here is mine. Let me adjust my camera. This is my. I've been, you know, I've been working on this one. A lot of times, I like to have like a fresh example, but in this one, I've been, I've been working on it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've been doing things like this: the typewriter, this sort of uh, rather slender self-portrait, this picture of uh, that sort of bewildered and indignant pug, this strangely malformed man. Uh, but yes, but now I have a blank page in which to get to work. So hopefully you've got a blank page too. First of all, let's talk a bit about moths. All right. So first of all, look at this creature. It's mildly repulsive, isn't it? But this is an Australian poodle moth, apparently. I don't know. There's something. It seems like this thing of nightmares. It also seems like it's from like um, Guillermo del Toro or something. It's, just, it's horrifying. Um, so yeah. So this is an Australian poodle moth, apparently. But there's lots and lots of kinds of moths, and um, they're just beautiful. You think of like a gray moth, like that. You know, you think of the white moth that you see there, or that giant leopard moth, or the codling moth. It's sort of a brown thing that you see it flying out of your sweater drawer and you see cringe. So, yeah, this is uh, a broad range of things, and some of them are absolutely beautiful and huge. They can be really large and really interested. So, interesting. Yeah. A lot of people are questioning whether that picture is a felted one. It is indeed felted, so it's not a real. That's not what they look like. Wait a minute. This is not a real thing. So, is there a thing that looks remotely like that? Now that I look at it, of course it's felted. Oh well. So, all right. Maybe it was. Maybe that was a prank. I don't know. But look, these are real. These are real ones, and look at how beautiful they are. So we're celebrating National Moth Week. Um, it's only been around for about 10 years, but did you know, this is kind of amazing, 
that there are between 150 and 500,000 species of moth. A half a million species of moth. No wonder I have holes in every sweater. Maybe it's time to stop making sweater jokes, but yeah. Um, so yes, 150 to 500,000 types of moths. Well, we're going to just draw one or two. Let's just move on and draw one or two. What do you think? So I kind of like this one. This is a Hyalophora cacropia. It's known as the cacropia, cacropia moth. So I think that this is very beautiful. I think if I saw this, I would wasn't would I would think I would think it was a butterfly. But now you look at it and you see like what is the difference? Maybe um, our 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 uh, academic friend can tell us. Um, can you tell us what is the difference between Erica? Can you tell us the difference between a moth and a butterfly? I mean, I, I assume it's kind of like the furry body, um, the meatiness of them. Then you think about silk moths. I remember as a kid. There was like a craze when I was a kid of raising silk moths. It's not like a bizarre thing to, to be doing, but we did. We had silk moths, and and they were little caterpillars, and then they would we they would spin cocoons, and then the cocoons you could you were supposed to when they were in the cocoon before they became out as a moth, you were supposed to throw them into boiling water, and that would somehow make them into silk thread. It just seemed. I, I could never get into that part of it, so I never did. And I just ended up with an envelope full of eggs that were that sat in our Saab station wagon glove compartment for years. They're probably still there. They've probably been there for 45 years. So, yeah, if you ever happened to bought an old Saab station wagon, circa, it was a beige color, circa 1973, look in the glove compartment. Anyway, <clears throat> so, uh, yes, uh, we have an answer here. Moths have the feelers that you can see in the front, the feelers, and they're hairier. And uh, Tiffany adds, moths fold their wings over their abdomen. Butterflies fold them up vertically. Really? That's interesting. Okay, so we now know some more stuff. Thistle adds their antennas are fuzzy and butterflies are club shaped. Man, there's a lot of a lot of knowledgeable people out here. Um, Valerie points out that, that moths get a bad rap about sweater holes. Of course they do. It's completely unacceptable that there's this that there are five hundred thousand species of insects that will destroy a good four ply cashmere sweater. Um, Mark says Moths tend to eat grains and wood pulp. Butterflies eat nectar. Okay. All right, I think I think we can stop now. I don't want to know anymore. I wanted to start drawing. And I think I'm going to draw with um, India ink and a dip pen today. Just because why not? Haven't done it in a while. And uh, I'm using Windsor Newton India ink, of course. Which, by the way, has... Um, is a spider on the jar. So yeah, so um, let's let's try this out. Uh, so here's the thing is, I also was thinking I might do a Luna Moth later on. So I could, I'll see how it goes. I might fill this whole page. I don't know yet. I might fill this whole page with one moth or I've, I'm already fearing that I've made this too large. Have I? My zeal? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna have to do some, some editing immediately. A few moth experts out there, you're going to say, well, hold on, these proportions are completely wrong. Yeah, they are. They're going to be wrong. It's okay. I'm cool with it because I'm not a lapidotherist. What do you call some? Isn't that what a is that a but a butterfly expert is called something like that? Anybody know? Um, I'm not one of those, and I don't know if that if moth experts, um, Erica, maybe you can tell us. Are moth experts also called? Is it lapidopterist? Oh, God, what's the word? Anybody know? 
Lapa. I don't know. Don't know. I'm getting the shape a little wonky, but it's okay because I really want to focus on these beautiful, beautiful decorations, the beautiful decorations that I'm seeing here. That's really the key to this. Is how to um, yes, I haven't drawn it with a dip pen in a while. It's, it's nice. It's nice to do it. Scratchiness, picking on this paper. This is you know cold press paper so it's kind of chunky so here's I'm trying to see these feelers or kind of something like that and then we're going to go and we'll, we'll add more more accuracy as we move along this is going to be a work in a, a constantly evolving situation which seems appropriate and uh I think a lot of these adaptations, the designs, are designed to look like predators, right? They want to look like a bird's face or something, so that other insects that might eat them see them sort of clinging to a tree and think, oh, that might be a bird. Kind of a weird bird, but it might be a bird, so I better just be careful. So that's like these little kind of semicircles. I think are are kind of eye related, right? I don't know. I'm remembering what I can from like sixth grade biology. The last time I was quite serious about being a naturalist. But, but I think what would be interesting is to to do this with an eye on sort of abstraction, like planning to do something that's kind of more about the, the patterns than it is about necessarily trying to create a real animal, a real photographic thing. As happens a lot of times when I draw with a dip pen, I'm starting to get splatter. Well, it's not splatter, actually. It's, that would be indicate that it wasn't my fault, but it is my fault. It's drips. Drips. Dripping the ink down. You know what it just struck me is that in some ways, this moth looks a bit like a sweater. It's almost like a fair isle sweater. Not a feral sweater, but a fair isle sweater. Right, these little these little bands down here could be like a, a cuff or a collar, like one of those sweaters that I remember girls wearing in the eighties when I was in college. So the pr look of preppy sweater design. Kind of exaggerating this now, just to give it a bit more personality. Kind of regretting that I didn't approach it this way from the beginning and just say, you know what, to hell with trying to do an accurate drawing of this moth. Let's just play around and have give it some personality. But I don't know. I think I got intimidated by the fact that there's a moth expert in the audience. I thought, oh, she's going to say this is not scientifically accurate, but. Oh well. 
Yeah, it looked, I mean, Jen is saying it would be a fabulous robe pattern. It's, it's almost like a bit like one of those, kind of like a Pendleton, um, you know, one of those sort of Western flannel shirts or something. I mean, it's, it's, it's just like a really good color scheme, kind of charcoal gray, and then this uh, orange, rust orangey color. It's nice. Very nice. Good job, nature. How does nature do it? Season after season, she comes out with innovative designs that stun the runways. All right, so I'm going to let this dry for one beat. It's on camera, this looks huge, but it's not a very big drawing. Okay, so let's put away this Indian ink for a minute. I'm always, I always feel uh, enormously relieved when I get through that stage without knocking over the bottle. All right, so now I'm just going to throw this towel. I'm throwing in the towel to just make sure there aren't any huge blocks, blocks of ink there. And now I'm going to try seeing how this works. So this is a, this marker is a Payne's Gray. You've probably heard me exult about the Payne's Gray marker before. I do like it. And, uh, as you can see, it's pretty dark, and I don't necessarily want everything this dark, so I'm going to deal with that in a second. For now, I'm just going to put down some gray. Payne's gray again. It's not just pure gray. You can see it's kind of a slightly bluish, purplish kind of quality that it has, which I think is really quite nice. And I'm just going to put down some, basically putting down some color because I'm going to come back in with a brush and turn this into watercolor. So it isn't just, I have a whole bunch of brushes, where are they? Um, it isn't just marker, you know, marker can be beautiful, but also overwhelming. But when you come in with turn it into watercolor, You, it's not as harsh. Uh-oh, you see it's activating some of the India ink. But India ink, India ink is generally waterproof, but if it's not completely dry, you may have problems. Don't I have enough problems without this happening? I'm not going to blame it on India. It's a beautiful country. I love a lot of things about them, but I wish your ink would dry a little faster, India. Is there any people watching from India? And you can put in a word. Just say, you know what, could you have a slightly faster drying India ink? Is that possible? Speaking you see, you see, it's lots of nice shades of gray, though. It really is. But I'm afraid that some of this, like down here, this is not Payne's gray. It is black India ink that is off the reservation and is uh, messing around. You see, it's to me, this is a really fun exercise because it's a little abstract. I don't, you know, and it's also dealing with something that's an, a bit of an unknown. I don't really know what these moths look like, and so I can kind of make it my own, which is, oh, you see, that's activating black again. I think it looks okay, though. 
Is there any way to light it? Pamela wants to know. So there's no big shadow over the drawing. Yeah, I can go back to my studio in Phoenix. That's what I could do. I could, let me put this light on. What about this? Is that a bit better? Yeah, that's a bit better, right? If I turn it off. Yeah, that's a bit better. Okay, so I have a little bit of a light there. But yeah, I'm just using the light from the window. Back in the studio, I have huge banks of lights. I have huge phalanxes of Teamster lighting grips who come in and uh, haul in massive arrays of 10K lights and aim them down at the table. Here? No. I've got a window. And clearly, a window that isn't doing an adequate job. But thank you, Pamela. Thanks for pointing it out. So, all right. Let's bring in uh, another color. Let's bring in, what is this one? So this is cadmium red, maybe. We'll try burnt sienna, no. Blizzard crimson, let's try this cadmium red. Might be too bright though. Let's just try a little bit of it. Yeah, it's a little bright. But then we can mix it in. See, this is another thing I like about this. We can mix it in here. So this uh, mix in a bit of the uh, Sienna, and then mix them together, getting a new color, which is a bit more muted. That's not bad. Uh-oh, you see it's activating the black again. Gee whiz. You know what's scary? Is the fact that this ink is activating forced me to use the words gee whiz. You know, this is not... It's not the kind of language I prefer using. You know, when I have to resort to that kind of language. Darn it! Gee willikers! That's a humdinger of a mistake. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry for my sac <laughs> sacrament. But I spontaneously said that. Gee, will gee, gosh darn it. Um, Should I have done this in gouache? Good question that I just asked myself. Maybe I'll do one of these in gouache at some point because... But there's something kind of watercolory, a little bit watercolory about this creature. Maybe it's just because it has all these different colors in it. They kind of blend in. It's, it's got a lot of kind of variations, right? I mean, it's, it's not... See, here's another thing you can do with this. Take a wet brush, you take this tip, and you can just pick up a little bit of it right from the edge. And then you can go in, and you got a little bit of it just, just sitting in your brush. And then it, when it first hits the page, so you don't get this sort of intensity that I still have here. You've got a much, a diluted thing that as soon as it hits the paper. So the paper's never absorbing full on, full color. I am, I am, I'm probably going to do, yeah, this is still looking, it looks brighter, honestly, where I am than where you are. Let me see if I can adjust this anymore. A bit better. Yeah, it looks a bit more like, like it. So, and then a little bit of orangey red in the middle here.
Okay. Now, if I wanted to, and I slightly do, I could grab these, my watercolor pencils. Don't worry, this is not the way they come. It's the way I label them so that I am groping around in a dark bag. I'm like, oh, that's. Those are them. Um, so, yeah, so I might put in a bit of color pencil. It just raises the color intensity a little bit. Like in the places here. So doing this, pressing a towel onto it, seems like, oh, that's a pretty obvious and good idea, but it isn't really that great. I'm only doing it because of speed, but it does tend to absorb some of your paint, so it's not, so it tends to make things a little duller than, uh, than necessary. So this is, um, these are also watercolor pencils, which means that I can go back in and activate them. See, so I can take a wet brush and just turn that up a bit. When you wet a color pencil like that, it tends to, in some ways, make it more intense, but also make it a bit more blurred. So it kind of does both things, in my, in my experience. And now I'm going to take a... This is, what color is this? This is Mandarin. All right, so it's just, yeah, it's fairly good. And then finally, I might try and find, this is a Midnight Blue. I don't have a, there isn't a Payne's Gray pencil that I know of. But I could add a bit of texture in here, this way. Looking at it now, I think you might be wondering to yourself, why did he bother with that India ink at the beginning? Like, why, why not just draw with a regular pen? Which is a, you know, it's a reasonable question. I think the reason is... And I say, I think, as if I don't know, because maybe I don't, do know, don't know, I don't know. The part I felt like drawing with this particular instrument, but I think the reason I thought that was because drawing an organic creature, it's nice to draw with a dip pen because it is more organic feeling than drawing with a fine liner, which can sometimes be a little regular, a little, you know, technical. Lines are too straight. But with the dip pen, you get so much variety in terms of the weight of the lines and stuff like that. So anyway, so there's a reasonable butter, moth, excuse me, not butterfly. Um, was that so infinite wants to know, was I using a normal ink pen? So the ink pen I was using was this, which is a dip pen. And I was using that in combination with this, which is just a bottle of black India ink. So, uh, what brushes am I using? I'm using a, this is a Winsor Newton number six. It is a synthetic watercolor brush. And uh, these are brushes that, like initially, I was like, ah, synthetic brushes, but they've come a long way. And this is a just a round. And, um, I really, I think it's, I like it as a brush a lot. It works nicely. You forget that it's synthetic. It doesn't seem to be a problem. And, you know, you're not killing sables. You're not whacking the tails off animals to make a brush. And it's cheaper, which is an even better reason. Well, all right. Let's, let's move on. Let's try another one, shall we? We have time. Let's, yeah, we have time. Let's try another one. How about this one? That's gorgeous, right? 
that is a Luna Moth. In fact, let me get rid of this yellow fur um, because it's no longer true. This is a Luna Moth. Beautiful. Be I mean, that purple edging. Man, that's something else. So let's. I think I want to do it differently. I don't think I want to draw with a dip pen on this one. It doesn't feel like it has harsh lines around it, right? It feels. It feels liquid and diaphanous, gorgeous. So what should we do? I feel like it should be watercolor. Where's my watercolor set, though? I think my watercolor set. I don't have it handy. Why? Because we had to hurriedly pack up a lot of art supplies this morning to send back to town with my brother-in-law. Anyway, it's a long story, but I don't have a lot of art supplies. I've been whinging about it all morning, so I'll stop now. But yeah, we had to kind of rush and get rid of a bunch of stuff. So I don't have it. So I'm just going to kind of figure it out with these markers. So I'm going to, uh, first I think I'm going to do a bit of sampling, sam uh, testing. So let me just see. I'm going to test a few of these greens and see what I can do with them, what they actually look like. They all look obviously pretty dark, right? Let's see. I think... I think watercolor is definitely the right idea, don't you think? Look at those. So which which do we think? The top one? Let's try. We can try. Now, do I remember which one that was? I don't know. I think it was this one. Yeah, it was. All right, what is this green? This is called Hooker's Green, of course. So let's just, I'm just going to be more kind of... No, I can't even do it that way. I have, to, I have to do it this way. So I'm going to wet the brush, and I'm just going to try and pick up. <gasps> oh, cool. Splatter. I never even thought, I could, thought of that before. Okay, so let's just do some splatter. Um, and then let's just see what it's like to see. I can just build these layers like that. So I'm just going to do the general kind of shape of this thing. It's such a beautiful animal. Something about insects, though, even though when they're beautiful, they can be really beautiful, they are also somehow creepy. Why are they creepy? They're kind of otherworldly, right? In particular, this one, it looks like it's almost lit from within. God, it's so beautiful. So is somebody going to tell me now that this is this is like a handmade Luna moth. That's not a real Luna moth. Oh, that's actually, uh, that's from a Disney cartoon, you fool. Looks like it could be, right? I don't know. I think it's real. I'm pretty sure it's real. Yeah, as Jen says, it is pretty, but I would still run screaming if it came at me or came for you. More likely. So, let me tell you the story. So, a couple days ago, we were hiking, because that's, that's what you do when you're out here. You go hiking. We get up early in the morning, really early, and we go hiking at 6. And it's really nice. I mean, it's really, I, I really like doing it. So, we're out there hiking, and there are a lot of elks around here. First, we thought they were deers, but then it became clear they're elks. They're, I think, bigger than deers. I think the elk is the moth of the deer world. So the deer is like the butterfly, and the moth, the elk is the, is the moth. I don't know. I don't know what that means, but yeah. So, so suddenly, we come upon, or we turn a, turn a corner, and there are easily a dozen elks, a herd of elk. And 
We're just standing there and they all look up at us. And they're like, uh, they weren't so close that they could step on us, but we have them that come into our yard all the time. But to see this many of them in the forest was, was quite something. Anyway, so just speaking of insects, just at that minute, I'm ahead and JJ is behind me with Twiglet. Suddenly, JJ screams. And uh, I whip around. Twiglet had just stepped on a tarantula. So, yeah, that's kind of alarming. Nothing happened. I mean, the tarantula took the brunt of it. Nothing happened to Twiggy. But uh, the tarantula looked a little dish, sort of bent. And, uh, yeah. And, of course, because of all the kerfuffle, the elks ran off. They're like, ah, tarantula, pug, sc screaming person. But, yeah. So that's... That's my insect story. Another thing that happens here in Arizona, and I don't know if it's apocryphal, probably not, hasn't happened to me directly yet. You have to, when you leave your shoes, like by your bed or whatever, you have to be careful when you, when you put them on in the morning, you have to look inside them. Why? Scorpions. Scorpions can crawl into your shoes put your foot in and they attack you. Erica, our resident expert, says actually tarantulas aren't insects. I guess spiders aren't insects. What are they? They're spiders. Is that like a whole other class? Is that what it is? What are they? They're insects in my book, I'll tell you what. But I'm from New York, I don't know. So you are, you're not being pedantic, but what are they? What is it that they're spiders? Is that what they're, they're considered? Among their friends? They're arachnids, which is the, uh, arachnids. That is the, you know, the $10 word for spider, isn't it? What else are scorpions insects? I like having a resident naturalist to answer these questions that I come up with. What about elks? I know they're not insects, pretty sure, right? Although I have to say, they are eating their way through this neighborhood, eating, pulling the, the um, leaves off every growing thing around here like locusts which are insects, pretty sure. Um, oh, of course, because arachnids have eight legs, so therefore, elks, only four. Yeah, so, this is very kind of soft and mushy, this thing that I'm painting. I need to sharpen it up somehow. Is this a colored pencil deal, maybe? Could it be turquoise? No. Maybe it's a job for regular colored pencils, as opposed to work. <laughs> Maybe it's a job for this guy. Maybe. No, but now I'm afraid to use a non-watercolor pencil, so I'm going to stick to maybe this guy. This is considered grass. So I can just go in and uh, paper is a little wet, so it's, it isn't loving the colored pencil right this minute. But as it dries, it'll get better. I think what I'll also do later on is I'll go in with uh, some white. Oh, yes. 
How are you doing? Are you having trouble with this this creature? The, the kind of transparency of it? It's a little challenging. And I, it'll be satisfied to put on that purple. But I'm not ready to do it yet. I'm not ready to be satisfied. I prefer to live in a state of discomfort. Right, here we go. That's a pretty good match, wouldn't you say? That is a pretty good match. And it might even be such a good match that I'm going to just wing it, as it were. Winging it seems appropriate when you're drawing a moth, right? Again, it looks a little, little intense, so I can just sort of soften the edge there. I, I've never tried this before, so you're witnessing a first of many. So we pride ourselves on here is How many things can we do we've never done before? Not do them well necessarily, that's asking way too much, but just, you know. I might go in and also put in a little bit more intensity. Because these wings are are really lots of beautiful different shades of green. I mean, I imagine that this is masquerading as a leaf, right? Of some kind? Is that what they're doing? I'm not sure what the Luna part of it is. Is it because they, I mean, when I, I've seen them flying, I think. Maybe just in movies, but I mean, they really are mysterious and beautiful. I guess they look like they're glowing from the moon. Is that what it is? Maybe. It's a very subtle, elegant, looking creature. And you know, this might have been an interesting thing to have done in gouache because you could have done it on a dark background. That's part of what makes this photo successful, I think, is that it's a dark background. And that makes the contrast more pronounced. And look at those little things that I left out, which are these two little circles that look like drops of water. That's ingenious. So it's basically like a leaf with little droplets of water on it. And if the only mis problem with this design is, what if you're the kind of animal that likes to eat wet leaves? And this little moth suddenly doesn't look like he's it's kind of like, I know, I'll dress up like a cheeseburger and no, <laughs> no person and eat me. Oh, really? I like a cheeseburger now and then. Let me eat that guy. Oh, it's, it's a person? Oh, I wish it had been a cheeseburger. So, 
So yeah, one could go in and sort of put in some a dark background. My, it's a bit late for that. It is a bit late for that. All right, this is a bit, a bit not what I thought it was going to be, but it's okay. It was a, it was a, an opportunity to play. See, I'm starting to make excuses already. Abandoning my commitment to this drawing. Just throwing it under the bus. Throwing it to the walls. There you have it. Um, let me get off this drawing. Come back to me. For those of you who've never been to draw with me before, well, I mean, is it bad? I think it's okay. I've never, as I said, never done it before, so God, the excuses are flying. Um, yeah, but I had fun doing it. I, I think figuring out this, like, to me, what was an interesting experience is how do you, when you look at something like this, you say, how am I ever going to do it? Like, what is my approach going to be? I can just pull out a ballpoint pen or I can pull out a fine liner just have at it but I don't know that we could have caught captured what was special about that Luna moth that way I think we had to you know experiment and I think watercolor was a good call um, but you know what would have been nice maybe there is a toned watercolor that Honolulu makes toned water paper color paper that might have worked I just, I'm feeling the need for a background. So I could go in now and paint a background. But I think I'm done. I'm done with the experiment. I'm done with it. It is National Moth Week. So theoretically, I could spend the whole week doing that. But, you know, honestly, what have moths ever done for me? I'm, I'm just asking. What have they done for me? Erica? Have I spent as much time as is reasonable to spend on this creature? I'm just asking. Um, yeah. I think also what will be helpful with that Luna moth is once it's fully dry, I can go in with maybe some white gouache, um, even some white ink and a dip pen, and add some some more contrast with some lines. I could also even consider doing that to the other moth. Might be nice. We'll see. Or I could turn the page and do something else. <sighs> All right, so Erica's answering my question. They pollinate. That's why. That's what they've done for me. Yeah. So they're responsible for allergies. Great. Thanks, moths. I have to say... I've had I've had more issues with moths than just about any other insects except possibly mosquitoes and flies and cockroaches. Um, Pamela, those pro markers, and I want to emphasize this, are not regular pro markers. They are pro marker watercolor. You see, watercolor with a U. So. But you could take regular pro markers, and I think you could take thinner, and you could liquefy them too. So play around with them. Uh, I think you know what I also like about these watercolor markers is they don't go through the paper, which is really important if you are a sketchbook artist like I am. So you don't want to always be like ruining your previous page. I mean, imagine if this pug now had a moth coming through it. That would be annoying, but it doesn't. So, but actually that's, yeah, these, that pug is gouache. That pug is gouache. Remember these, remember when we did these? That was fun. 
what do you think? What are, what are good things for us to be doing? Draw with me. People, we do quite a lot of people. We do machines, like we did the fire engines. We do different kinds of critters. Um, I'm always interested to know what you think. So feel free to comment. You can even comment on this video and just say, you know what? I wish that you would do yakety yak. Um, all right, good. Bumblebees. I think we've done bees before. We've done bees. You want us to draw Boris Johnson? No, absolutely not. Umbrellas, cars we've done. Umbrellas, umbrellas. Clothing, yeah, umbrellas. Umbrellas. Cats, we've done cats. Seashells, never done seashells. Hands, haven't done hands. Storefronts. That's a good one. I like that one. Buildings. Yeah, we've done some buildings, but we could do more. The moon. How about, yeah, the moon. More seams. Tell us more about that. Flowers. Yes, we've done some flowers, but yeah, we could certainly do more of that. Lantana. What is Lantana? And how does one draw it? Um, caterpillars. Maybe we've done, yeah, we've done a fair number of critters, insects. Should probably have uh, some kind of a gallery somewhere of everything we've done. Planets, a landscape, fruit and vegetables. We've done that a couple times. Um, what's in front of me? A coffee cup. Yeah, we've, we've done that a little bit. That would be nice. Um, Particularly if you were in some place that was more interesting. I'd rather draw Boris Karloff than Johns. We've actually drawn Boris Karloff. Do you remember that? On Halloween, we drew Boris Karloff, but not Boris Johnson. Um, or Boris Spassky, former world chess champion. Vegetables, Mary Poppins umbrella. That has the parrot handle, right? Possibly. Tomatoes. Yes, we have not seen good tomatoes, at least in Arizona. So, yeah, books, shells, glasses. Spectacles? Mice. Hmm, interesting. Boy, you guys are having a lot of good ideas. Instruments? I like that. Crystals. Hmm. Crystals. Maybe. Octopus. We did squids once. We did draw a squid. That was in, in uh, celebration of Inktober. The Eiffel Tower. Sharks. The Eiffel Tower. Sharks. Lanterns, waves, otters. Lantana is a noxious weed in Australia. Yeah, I think we'll devote several episodes to that. We'll have we'll celebrate Lantana Month by just drawing various aspects of noxious weeds. No, we're not drawing Lantana. Not doing it. Sorry. Trees. Uh, we drew trees about a month and a half ago, didn't we? Cacti. Interesting. A blobfish. Self-portraits, yeah, we haven't done self-portraits in a while. As you know, it's my favorite thing to draw. Elephants or llamas. Um, ocean wave, alpacas, ships, eyes, furniture, native flora and fauna. Illustration with two figures interacting. That's very specific. I like that. Um, Danny, does it get frustrating finding reference pictures or feeling bad about using someone else's photo? I want to paint so many photos to see online, but we're painting a pic from, say, Getty Images. Well, I don't feel bad about it. I get bored with it sometimes, but I would say don't do that. Then go and um, there's so many great free stock places, and that's where I get my pictures generally. Um, but you can also use your own pictures or... Even better, don't draw from a photograph. Here's why we draw from photographs and draw with me. And I want to make this announcement. I don't normally draw from photographs. I do it here so we can all have the same reference. That's why I like doing self-portraits because, you know, we're just working from a mirror or something. But So I would like to work less from photos. But how? Any suggestions are welcome. The Queen's Crown, Vincent Price... 
an acacia tree, dragonflies, Neil Armstrong on the moon. I like that. Feet. Feet are fun, but a lot of people are, are repulsed by them. Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell has a new album, I heard. Apparently she was like very sick and she got better. Now she has an album. Roadrunners, possibly with coyotes. Bikes. Uh, more llamas. Cartoon animals. Yes, we've done a few. We did Tony the Tiger and we did Mickey Mouse. No, Donald Duck. Those are all good. Storefronts, another vote for storefronts. A camel. What does resonant voice mean? Curious about that. A rock concert, lighthouses. Man, you guys have so many good ideas. You you are uh, you are saving me a lot of trouble. More otters and uh, succulents, ko koala bears. Koala bears. Gargoyles, armadillos. So I'm getting a lot of animals. I like that. Superheroes. Yeah, superheroes. Ghost towns. I like that, Jeff. I like your little icon, too. Ghost towns. Maybe we could listen to appropriate music, too. Um, microbial or fungi. Why not? We did moths, nuts and bolts. Everybody could draw their key ring. That's a good idea. We've done, I did think we did a thing where we like emptied out our pockets or emptied out our bag and just did stuff from on the table. That was quite nice, quite interesting. Planets. Uh, Alex received his Hanamura watercolor pad yesterday. That is great. I'm excited for you. That's cool. Sloths. A blue-footed booby birds. Well, we have done Donald Duck, so <laughs> close enough. He had orange feet, but hippos. JJ, JJ's favorite animal. Oh man! All right, fairies, moss piglets, moss piglets, amoeba. Cameras. All right. A lot of good ones. Let me take them under advisement and uh, get back to you. Van Gogh. We've drawn, um, we've drawn some, but maybe we should draw Van Gogh himself. That we've never done. That we've never done. And I actually came across some quite nice photos of Van Gogh. Have you ever seen a photo of him? There's a number of them. Very different because we think of him so much as his paintings. Dachshunds, of course. And a half gallon milk. Yeah. What is a half gallon milk now? It's about $2.50, I hear. Or it's $5 a gallon. Dinosaurs. All right. <laughs> Let me stop now. Thank you all. Thank you all um, with your suggestions. Thanks for drawing moths with me today. I look forward to seeing them. Let's move on to our conclusion. So, hashtag SBS draw with me. Please put that on your drawing and post it on Facebook, on Instagram, or in the Sketchbook School schoolyard. And we will collect all your moths. We want to see them all together. Um, if you sign up for my essays, which I put out every week, now twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, you will get this book, Never Feel Guilty About Making Art and Other Essays. You'll get all of it free, not the Tuesday essays. Those cost an enormously large amount of money. But for those of you who like free stuff, and I know you do, you're going to want to get my essays. Just go to dannysessays.com, tell me where to send them, and I'll do the rest. You won't be asked for a credit card. You won't be asked for cash. You won't be asked for a cashier's check. Um, nothing. You won't, there's, there's no... Uh, requirement to do anything except sit back and enjoy. And of course, subscribe to this channel. If you subscribe to this channel, then you'll know that I put out an essay, a video essay, every Tuesday. You'll know that there's another episode of Draw With Me coming up every Thursday because you'll be notified. And also you'll know soon that the podcast is back. Yes, 
It'll be a few more weeks, but we're going to be back. So it's all happening. It's all good. And, uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. Thanks for being here. And uh, thanks for drawing moths. <laughs>